Often, you know, counting is one of the first things you learn when you study a modern language. It's important because you need to learn to say how many coffees you want to buy, what your hotel room number is, or how much the street vendors are swindling you. But not so in Latin, primarily because you don't need to talk to anyone in Latin on your travels. It's just communicating with the dead, and they only speak from the grave through literature. You don't speak back, unless, of course, you're learning Latin orally, but that's another matter. But that doesn't mean that learning numbers in Latin is not important. This video will talk about Latin numbers, more specifically the cardinal numbering system. I'll cover the other numbers, ordinals, in a different video. The counting numbers, and they are called cardinal numbers. The word cardinal comes from the Latin word cardo, which is a hinge, you know, like on a door. These counting numbers are the hinges on which all other numbers depend. They're the chief numbers. I remember them because cardinal and counting both begin with a hard C, k. So the cardinal numbers in Latin are as follows. Unus aum is one, duo duai duo is two, tres tria is three, quator is four, quinque five, seix six, septem is seven, octo eight, noem is nine, and decem is ten. So let's stop here for a second and compare the first ten numbers in Latin to those in French, Spanish, and Italian. Here you can easily see how Latin is the mother tongue of all of these, and if you already know how to count in a daughter language, the Latin numbers should be a cinch. And just for fun, here's the German. German didn't come from Latin, but it shares a common ancestor thousands of years ago, and you can see the similarity between these cousin languages. Also, the last four numbers should look familiar to any English speaker. And just put a burr after them and you'll get the name of our months, September, October, November, and December. Now, unfortunately, December is the 9th month, not the 7th, October the 10th, not the 8th, November the 11th, not the 9th, and December the 12th, not the 10th. But these months were originally named back when the new year began on March 1st, instead of January 1st. Oh, so now these names would make sense. Also, you'll notice that the numbers unus, duo, and trace have different endings for different genders. I'll get back to this declension of these numbers at the end of the video. For now, let's keep going with numbers 11 through 20. Undecim is 11, duodecim is 12, tredecim is 13, quatordecim is 14, quindecim is 15, seedecim is 16, septendecim is 17, duodewiginti is 18, undewiginti 19, and wiginti 20. The pattern for Latin here is pretty simple. We add one number to 10, and we get the new number. Undecim is 1 plus 10, so 11, duodecim is 2 plus 10, 12, and that works until we get to 18, and now we start counting back from 20. Duo de Wiginti literally is 2 from 20. Subtract 2 from 20 and you get yeah, 18. Un de Wiginti is 1 from 20, 19. The strange thing is comparing these numbers to French, Spanish, and Italian. Latin's modern forms continue the additive method for 18 and 19. It's 8 plus 10 and 9 plus 10, rather than 2 and 1 from 20. So you would expect the words octodecim and noem decim, or the reverse, decim octo and decim noem, to be used in Latin at some point in time, and they were, just rarely, and possibly in the lower classes who didn't write literature or very late in the Roman Empire. The elite, educated Latin that we still have in the writings of Cicero and Caesar seemed to prefer duo de wiginti to octodecim. So let's keep going. 21 is wiginti unus, or unus et wiginti. To get 22, you just do wiginti duo. 30 is triginta, 40 quadriginta, 50 quinquaginta, 60 sexaginta, 70 septuaginta, 80 octoginta, 90 is nonaginta, and 100 is kentum, and 101 would be kentum et unus. The hundreds make complete sense. 200 is ducenti, 300 trecenti, 400 quadringenti, 500 quingenti, 600 sescenti, 700 septengenti, 800 octengenti, 900 nongenti, and 1,000 is mille. Anything above 1,000 is just a multiple of 1,000, like 7,000 is septem milia. And notice that this is really 7,000s, you plural mille to milia. Centum milia is 100,000. Also, for the hundreds, notice that the second half is either kenti or genti, the C or a G, the two consonants that are very related to each other. This is like how the name Gaius is abbreviated with a C. 
As I said before, Unos, Duo, and Tres look different from the others in that they have feminine and neuter forms as well. These three numbers, and these are the only three until you get to the hundreds, are declined. So what that means is that the number for one, two, or three will look different if it's doing the action or receiving it. So unus dominus servum laudat, one master praises a slave, and dominus unum servum laudat, the master praises one slave. The number will also look differently if, the, if it is used with nouns of different genders. So we can change dominus to domina, and unus changes to una. Here's the declension for unus in its masculine, feminine, and neuter forms. Unus, una, unum, then unius in the genitive of all three genders. The dative is uni, again, for all three genders. The accusative unum, unam, unum, and the ablative uno, una, uno. These look like first and second declension endings, except for the genitive and dative, which follow the pattern of several other adjectives of number and quality, like nullus, uter, and solus. Oh, and there's no plural of one. I think you can figure out why. Here's the declension for duo. Duo, dua, duo. And then duorum, duorum, duorum in the genitive, and this is like the first and second declension. Then duobus, duabus, duobus in the dative, like the third declension. Duos, duas, duo. Remember that the neuter accusative is always identical to the nominative, and others are like the first and second declension. Uh, and the ablative is the same as the dative. Duobus, duobus, duobus. And these, of course, look like the plural endings because well, two is plural. And now here's trace. This word has identical endings for masculine and feminine, like some third declension adjective. Trace, tria. And then the genitive is trium for all three genders. Tribus for the dative. Trace, tria, again, for the accusative. And tribus for the ablative, just like the dative. The hundreds are also declined with first and second declension endings, so here's 200, ducenti, in all three genders in five cases. Learning the numbers for Latin is an important exercise because even if they aren't as important in a classical language as they are in a modern one, you'll see numbers all the time. But you know the numbers aren't so different from any other languages, and this makes them easier to learn. So compare these Latin numbers to French, Spanish, and other Romance languages, and you'll not only learn them better, but you'll also learn a bit about how these languages have changed from Latin through time.